find the point on the curve y equals square root of x that's closest to the point 3, 0. So let's go ahead and draw a picture so we can kind of visualize what's going on and we'll make the square root of x graph and we're going to make the point 3, 0 and we're going to pick a point on the curve so that's some x and y point on the curve so that we can compute the distance between 3, 0 and this point. Remember our curve was y equals square root of x. So what we're interested in is finding this distance between some point on the curve and 3, 0. So distance equals, we're just going to use the distance formula. So that's the x from one of the points minus the x from the other squared plus the y minus the y from the other point squared. Now we can simplify that a little bit. We could multiply this x minus 3 by itself. And that's going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9 and then we have plus y squared. So we have the distance but it's a function of both x and y and we only want it a function of x. Well our connection is right over here because our point x, y is on the graph y equals square root of x. So that will be true. So let's replace the y squared with square root of x squared, which of course is just x. So our distance is going to be x squared minus, we've got a plus x here and the minus 6x, so 5x plus 9. Now we want to find the closest Point, so we're interested in when this distance is at a minimum. We're going to take a derivative then to optimize. We would be looking for critical numbers and then finding a minimum. So derivative is going to be, now let's go ahead and rewrite this as a one-half power instead of a radical because then we can find a derivative using the power rule. This is going to need a power rule, chain rule. So power out in front decrease the power by 1. That's negative 1 half then. Chain rule multiplied by the derivative of what's inside. That's going to be 2x minus 5. Let's go ahead and express this uh, without the negative exponent so we can see what it looks like here. This is going to be square root. We're going to put it back in radical form. 5x plus 9. Now critical numbers would be any place that this equals 0 or any place that this was undefined. So let's think about the undefined first. We would have it undefined if that stuff under the radical was 0. That's a quadratic. We could put that in the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, but we see that we would get a negative under the square root, so these solutions are imaginary. So it never does equal 0, so that's not going to be a problem. And then this is a parabola that opens up. I could find the vertex by doing negative b over 2a, and that x value would be 5 halves for the vertex. And if I put 5 halves in here, Looks like I get 11 fourths. And so the vertex is up in the first quadrant, positive, positive, opens up. And so it's always positive. So this denominator is always positive. We'll never have a negative under the square root. There are no values where this is undefined. So the only critical number would come from where it equals 0. And so with the bottom always being positive, it's just where the numerator equals 0. So where 2x minus 5 equals 0. So we could see that that's going to be where x equals 5 halves. Now we need to confirm that that's a minimum and one way we could do that is look at the second derivative and confirm that it was always positive so we always had a concave up and knew we had a minimum. Now that looks a little bit complicated to take a second derivative of that because it's a quotient and got a radical. So I'm instead going to just look at the signs of the first derivative. I know the first derivative is 0 at 5 halves. Let's pick a number over here. Let's pick 2. If I put 2 in here, I have a negative numerator. And we said the denominator was always positive, so it's negative here. So it's decreasing to the left of 5 halves. Now let's put in 3, and we can see the numerator is positive, and the denominator was always positive, so we get a positive. So indeed, this is a minimum because it's decreasing till x is 5 halves, and then it's increasing. 
All right, so the point where the curve y equals square root of x is closest to the point 3, 0 is going to be, this point right here is going to be 5 halves for the x, and then we just need to have the square root of 5 halves for the y. And there's no reason to rationalize in calculus, so that's a good way to leave it.